The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He's got a money trainers, Gav. Order. I've called the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his statement that, quote, the vast majority of New Zealanders are now better off even after the GST increase, end quote? If so, which New Zealanders are worse off? The Honourable Bill English on behalf of the Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Prime Minister, yes, I stand by my full quote made in October last year, which is, quote, most of you will have noticed a boost in your pay packet since 1 October tax cuts. The vast majority of New Zealanders are now better off even after the GST increase. That was, of course, referring to the income tax GST switch that happened, that happened on 1 October 2010. To the second part of the member's question, there were some people who weren't fully compensated by the tax changes. Those were people who were sheltering income in trusts or otherwise earning income that wasn't fully taxed at the personal tax rates. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Is the Prime Minister saying that taking into account inflation and the level of tax cuts given to people on the median or lower income, that those people are now better off than they were before, taking account of both GST and inflation? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, yes, Mr Speaker. The after-tax average wage has increased 7.1 per cent over the previous year, considerably more than the increase, in, the increase in prices over that time. In fact, the real increase in the after-tax average wage over the last year has been 2.5 per cent. The Honourable Mr. Leader of the Speaker, when he claims that average wage increases uh, have increased by 2.5 per cent over the last year, what account does he take of the fact uh, that for his income he would have got uh, $1,000 extra a week in tax cuts and the top 10 per cent got 40 per cent of the tax cuts, thus, thus distorting the real income earned across the board by people and that lower people on the median income or less are actually worse off? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, the measure I am using is the one uh, that has been used by this Parliament in legislation for 20 years to calculate the basis of national superannuation. And if the Labor Party thinks that is wrong, uh, then they should campaign among New Zealand's pensioners to change the way that national superannuation is adjusted. The fact is that the there has been a real increase of 2.5 per cent in the average ordinary time after-tax weekly wage in the last 12 months. The Honourable Leader Mission, of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, is he telling New Zealanders on the medium wage, or less than the medium wage, that they're wrong in believing that the cost of their food, their power, their rents and their petrol have soared above any of the wage increases that they have got and that he actually knows better than them? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, I'm just telling the uh, Parliament the facts about the averages. Of course, in individual circumstances, there are many New Zealanders who over the last two or three years have not had uh, significant wage increases or had no significant wage increases at all. And they are victims of the mismanagement of this economy by the previous Labor government, where they thought they had sustainable jobs, but actually they were based on borrowed money and excessive government spending. We're working very hard to replace those unsustainable jobs and uh, times of no wage increases with the benefits of a strong, growing economy, and we're making some progress. Rahui Katane. Speaker, to the Prime Minister, is he aware that over the last month the price of fruit and vegetables has risen another 1.6 per cent? And does he agree that adding $6 million to the $300 plus million the government is already borrowing per week to take GST off healthy food would leave every New Zealander better off, and if not, why? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, while it's true that food prices do rise in some months, they also fall in others. For instance, over the last six or seven months, the price of fruit and vegetables has actually fallen in total. That is good for household budgets. Uh, I'm not sure New Zealanders are any healthier as a result. The second is that every dollar we do add to our already fast rising debt will need to be repaid with interest. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, did the uh, cut in taxes for a person on the medium wage, which was about $14 a week, adequately cover the cost of filling up their car, 
uh, with petrol, cover the average rental increase in Auckland of $23 a week, uh, cover the increase of food prices that went up by 7.4 per cent, averaged over the year, just to name a few of the costs that those families are facing. The Hon. Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, there won't be a family uh, that is on $14 an hour, uh, and the member should look at the family, the family support system. The, uh, $14 a week. $14 a week. Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker uh, the fact is New Zealand families who are on low incomes benefit from working for families, uh, from accommodation supplement where that is required from subsidies on early childhood education. The government, has worked, the government has increased all of those subsidies for those families, despite the fact that we've had the biggest recession in a generation. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, uh, were, were Statistics New Zealand right in stating that median incomes actually fell in the year to June last year, while the December quarter price rise was the highest in 20 years? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the member is always going to be able to find a measure of income and a measure of expenditure sometime in the last three years that don't match up. The fact is, on average, the real after-tax wages have increased. And secondly, the median income measure used by Stats New Zealand is not the one that we use to set national superannuation. And if, if Labor want to change it, they should say so. Uh, and, and thirdly, that measure does not take account of all the government transfers, which have all increased because we have protected the most vulnerable through the worst recession in a generation. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, what does the Prime Minister say to the Otangare branch of the Maori Women's Welfare League, who told Calvin Davis uh, recently that they are having an unprecedented demand for assistance, particularly food parcels, because unemployment has doubled among Māori to 19.5 per cent, and because costs have soared above the incomes that Māori people are earning in the north. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, we are fully aware of the impact of uh, significant unemployment, both among young people and among Māori, and that is why it is so important that we get this economy growing again because uh, we are not because New Zealand is not going to create new jobs out of new government schemes. It's going to create new jobs out of a fast growing economy. And I would be interested to know what Kelvin Davis said to that branch of the Maori Women's Welfare League. No doubt it was a large number of expensive, uncosted promises which he doesn't want broadcast to the rest of the country. The Honourable Trevor Mallet, uh, supplementary to the Prime Minister, does he understand today that real average wages go up when high income earners get massive tax cuts, including over $1,000 a week in his case, and low income workers lose their jobs? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, yeah, well, Mr Speaker, what I understand is that the Labor Party have always agreed, as we have, using the after-tax, the ordinary time average weekly wage as the basis for calculating national super. And uh, if they want to change it, they are welcome to go and campaign. Of course, there's a lot of statistical effects uh, on where the average wage comes out, but over time, Parliament has regarded it as the fairest measure of the overall uh, wage picture for New Zealanders, and that is why it is in the law where it's been for the last 25 years as the way of calculating national super. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Does the Prime Minister understand that real average wages go up when high income earners like himself get tax cuts of over $1,000 a week and low income workers lose their jobs? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, the member is wrong. Question number three, Michael Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr.